Hello and welcome to today's lesson on changes in internal energy, which is part of the particle model of matter topic in GCSE Combined Science Physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at how you can calculate the change in the internal energy of a substance. So if we are successful and we learn in today's lesson, we should be able to observe how the internal energy of a system can be changed, describe how a substance can change its internal energy, and then finally calculate the change in the internal energy of a substance, which forms part of of the following piece of the specification for GCSE Combined Science Physics, 6.3.2.2, temperature changes in the system and specific heat capacity, and then finally, specific latent heat. So previously, we've considered how to calculate the internal energy of an object. And the internal energy is equal to the kinetic energy of all the particles plus the potential energy of all the particles. Remember, this is a summation of all of the particles in the object. Now, the kinetic energy store is due to the movement of the particles. The potential energy store is due to the attraction between the particles. Now, with GCSE, we can't calculate the total internal energy of a substance easily, but we can calculate the change in the internal energy of a substance. So the when we look at the change in the kinetic energy of this of the particles, we've got to look at the specific heat capacity of the substance, while whilst we look at the change in the potential energy store of the particles, we've got to look at the specific latent heat of the substance. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at how you calculate the increase or decrease in the internal energy, not the total internal energy. Now we can work out the change in the kinetic energy store and the change in the potential energy store with different equations. Equations. And then these values can be added together to work out the total energy change in the internal energy of the substance. Now we define the equations for the two energy stores using the definitions for specific heat capacity and specific latent heat. So, specific heat capacity is the energy needed to raise the temperature of one kilogram by one degree Celsius, while specific latent heat is the energy needed to change the state of one kilogram with no temperature change. Now, we can identify these particular points on heating curves. So, you can see where you have a change of temperature or you've got a change of state. So, either you've got a change in the kinetic energy store or you've got a change in the potential energy store. Either you've got to use the specific heat capacity equation or you've got to use the specific latent heat heat equation. So these equations are as follows. The change in the kinetic energy store of a substance is equal to mass times by specific heat capacity times by the change in temperature. Mass is in kilograms, specific heat capacity is in joules per kilograms degree Celsius, and the change of temperature is in degrees Celsius. Whilst the change in the potential energy store is equal to E is equal to mass times by the specific latent heat, where once again, mass is in kilograms, but the specific latent heat is in joules per kilogram. Now the equation on the left is used to work out the energy transferred into or out of a substance when it changes temperature, whilst the equation on the right works out the energy transferred into or out of a substance when it changes state. Now just to clarify, these equations are given to you in your examination on the equation sheet, but if you're sitting the higher tier examination, it's likely you are to be asked to rearrange these, these equations in your examination. Now, like we mentioned before, okay, we can either, when we're working out a change of state, look at using the equation E equals ML, whilst if we want to look at a change of temperature, we use E equals MC triangle T. Now, the energy per kilogram needed to change the state from a solid to a liquid, or vice versa, is called the specific latent heat of fusion. Whilst the energy needed per kilogram to change the state from a liquid to a gas, or vice versa, is called the specific latent heat of vaporization. Now, the specific latent heat of vaporization is always larger than the specific latent heat of fusion for a substance. This is because there's a greater change in the forces of attraction going from a liquid to a gas compared from a solid to a liquid. Now, let's just look at a couple of examples of how you answer the question. So, a question could be, a 4 kilogram piece of lead is heated by 20 degrees Celsius. The specific heat capacity of lead is 128 joules per kilogram degree, degree Celsius. What is the change in the internal energy of the object? So the first thing you do is work out which equation to use. We've got a change of temperature here, so you write out the equation E equals M times by C times by triangle T. You then place the values into the equation, you then calculate an answer, but you put a unit on your answer and write the answer to the correct 
correct number of significant figures. It's the same idea here, but please remember that when you check your equation, now notice delta T or triangle T means change in temperature. So if you're given a starting temperature and you're given a final temperature, then you've got to work out the change in temperature. So it could be 10 to 40, which is 30 degrees Celsius. So you can work it out like that. Now in this example here, a 20 kilograms amount of ice is melted. And again, if it's melted, we've got to use the latent heat of fusion equation. So as a result, we would use uh, E equals ML. You then place the values in, you then calculate your answer, put a unit on your answer and write it to the correct number significant figures. So just to clarify, every object is a store of internal energy. Every object is made from particles, so you've got the attraction of the particles producing a potential energy store and the movement of the particles producing a kinetic energy store. So together, the kinetic energy store and the potential energy store of all the particles give you the, the total internal energy. So if you increase the temperature of a substance, you are increasing the kinetic energy store of the substance, which is increasing the overall internal energy of the substance. Work is being placed in to the object. So this change in kinetic energy store is given by the specific heat capacity equation where E equals M times by C times by triangle T. Now another name for the kinetic energy store is the thermal energy of the object. Now we've covered this concept previously in GCSE physics in the energy module. Now if you are changing the state of matter you can increase the potential energy store of the substance by putting work into it or decreasing the potential energy store of the substance if you take work out of it and this increase or decrease can change the internal energy of the object and change the state of matter. So here we're going from solid ice to liquid water. Now because work is being placed into the substance it's an increase in internal energy and we can work this out by the specific latent heat equation E equals ML which is a new concept we've just covered in GCSE physics. So latent heat is a physics concept which covers potential energy store change. The energy for a substance to change state is called the latent heat so when a change of state occurs the energy supply changes changes the energy stored but not the temperature. Now the specific latent heat of a substance is the amount of energy required to change the state of one kilogram of a substance with no change in temperature. So E would equal mass times by specific latent heat. And the specific latent heat of fusion is the energy needed to change the state from a solid to a liquid. The specific latent heat of vaporization is the energy needed to change the state from a liquid to a vapor. And the liquid heat of vaporization, sorry, the latent heat of vaporization is larger than the latent heat of fusion. So let's summarize what we've learned in today's lesson. If the temperature of a system increases, the increase in temperature depends on the mass of the substance heated, the type of material and the energy input to the system, where E equals M times by C times by triangle T. And the specific heat capacity C of a substance is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius. The specific latent heat of a substance is the amount of energy required to change the state of one kilogram of the substance with no change in temperature. E equals ML, where we've got the latent heat of vaporization, the change of state from solid to liquid, and the latent heat of vaporization, the change of state from liquid to vapor. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we can observe how the internal energy of a system can be changed, we can describe how a substance can change its internal energy, and we can calculate the change in the internal energy of a substance. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on the changes in internal energy, which is part of the particle model of matter topic in GCSE Combined Science Physics. Thank you very much for listening and have a lovely day.